Welcome back to the Caspa Silver YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the rapid emission schedule that Caspa has that I believe is actually a genius idea. So let's first get some context into this. So with every single cryptocurrency, there is a max supply or there is a infinite supply. And so especially in proof of work, there are typically max supplies within proof of work networks. You can see here Bitcoin has a max supply of 21 million Bitcoin. Ethereum is proof of stake and it has an infinite supply. You have XRP here with a hundred billion max supply. And then if you keep going down the list, you can see that a lot of coins actually have infinite supplies. So things like Solana, BNB, Dogecoin is one of those proof of work cryptocurrencies that is different and has a infinite supply. And then if you keep going down this list, you have a lot of other coins that may or may not have max supplies until we reach Caspa that has a max supply of around 28.7 billion. Now, if you want to know the exact amount that can ever exist in Caspa, there is a hard coded number and that number is 29 billion Caspa. So this max supply basically sets how many coins will ever exist for a project. And this typically gives a project value because this supply is not going to increase forever, unlike the US dollar, where the US dollar can basically be printed forever, which increases inflation. Whereas in things like Bitcoin and Caspa, their supplies are maxed out. They will hit a point where no more will be printed. And this means that there will be less inflation. And so the way that new supply is created is via miners and the people who are mining these cryptocurrencies are finding brand new coins that have never existed before. And this also typically follows a emission schedule. So basically how many coins are going to be released every single year. So if we look at Bitcoin, you could see that every single four years, the supply of how much is going to be released gets changed. And so when Bitcoin was first created, every single block contained 50 Bitcoin. And this lasted until 2012, where then it was halved to 25. And then if we go all the way up to 2024, which is right now, Bitcoin was recently halved to 3.125. So every time a miner finds a block, there's going to be 3.125 Bitcoin in that block on top of fees that are generated by people using the network. So Caswell also has an emission schedule, but this emission schedule does not copy Bitcoin, whereas you have every single four years, the emission is going to decrease to then one day be at zero. Instead, Caspa has a much faster emission schedule. And you could see here that in the first six months of the Caspa network, you had basically 500 Caspa per block coming out, which generated about 6 billion of the supply in the first six months. And that means 6 billion of the supply already existed. And then if you keep going all the way until where we are today, you could see that currently the block reward is 77 Caspa per block. And so in Caspa, blocks come out every single second. So that means 77 Caspa is being created every single second. So instead of this number having every single four years, it's actually having every single year. And on top of that, it's decreasing every single month to equal a halving every year. And that is so that the supply can actually be emitted much faster. And that's why today, as of recording, the current supply of Caspa is sitting at 25 billion and it's only been around since 2021. And this is equivalent to about 88 percent of the supply already in existence. And if we compare that to Bitcoin, you can see that Bitcoin already has 94% of the supply already in existence. And so Caspa and Bitcoin are pretty much very close together when it comes to how much of the supply is currently circulating and how much is left to be mined. Now, a lot of people when Caspa was 
first getting some attention, a lot of people were saying that this supply was either very scammy or this supply is actually very bad for Caspa because the end result of every single proof of work is that one day there will be no more emissions and new coins being created. And then the only way miners can remain profitable is by fees, unless you are something like Dogecoin, where practically right now Dogecoin is the only cryptocurrency that has solved the security funding problem because it has an infinite supply. But in Casper's case, it doesn't have an infinite supply. It has a max supply. And this max supply is going to be hit very, very soon. If we go back to the emission schedule here, you could see here that eventually by 2030, we're going to see the Caspa emission schedule basically be at zero Caspa per block. So you could see right here, 2031, the Caspa emission will only be 0.96 Caspa per block. And if we look at Bitcoin's emission schedule, you could see that this halving continues for many years and it doesn't go under one Bitcoin per block until 20. 32 where then it hits 0.78 bitcoin per block and then this halving schedule is going to go all the way up to 2136 or around 2140 whereas in caspa's emission schedule if we extend this all the way out it basically is going to end around 2056 or 2057 so the max supply is going to get hit on caspa before it will ever get hit on bitcoin because the emission schedule is just much faster. And so I want to talk about why this emission schedule is actually a very genius idea. So one of the reasons why the Bitcoin emission schedule is much slower and was giving a lot more Bitcoin in the early days and slowly decreasing that amount was because in the very early days, you needed an incentive for people to mine the Bitcoin network. And that is because Bitcoin was released and it was the first cryptocurrency to ever exist. A lot of people did not know what was crypto and the attention on crypto was so low. A lot of people said Bitcoin was going to die for many years. And so you needed a reason to keep miners mining and making rewards for their efforts. So that's why the halvings were created and it was done very slowly so that there was incentive to keep on mining. Now, the reason why Caspa took a much faster approach where you have very high block rewards in the early days and then decrease it very, very fast is because Yonatan was expecting attention to come much quicker and adoption to come much quicker. And this has actually been holding pretty true. It has been able to move up the ranks and reach number 38 in the entire crypto market based on market cap. And the market cap is currently close to about $4 billion. We also see that the current hash rate is sitting at 1.25 exahash. And if we were to just look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is currently sitting at about 800 exahash and if we're looking at the hash rates of both caspa and bitcoin you can see that they're very similar where they are pretty low in the early days and then just has this absolute crazy rise and basically continuing to make new all-time highs and bitcoin had the same similar type of hash rate but it actually was much lower for a much longer period of time because Bitcoin was still very new, and then it eventually was able to reach these higher hash rate levels over here in the last four to five years. But if we're looking right now, you can see Bitcoin is sitting at 752 exahash and Casper sitting at 1.26 exahash. So still, the rise in minor hash rate has been drastic for Casper. And this is not really something that you usually see in the cryptocurrency space when it comes to adoption looking at hash rate and it rising is a level of adoption that is coming in because when a miner turns on their hardware they literally just made an investment into the project by buying a miner and now they're trying to roi on that miner so this is a sign of adoption when this hash rate continues to rise over time and this is always been happening with Bitcoin and we're seeing it also happen with Caspa. Now here's why this fast emission is so great. It's because it allows Caspa to get in the hands of retail 
before it gets into the hands of big players. And this is very important because in the early days of Bitcoin, you didn't really have mining companies existing. You didn't have ETFs existing. You didn't have any of those kind of things existing when Bitcoin first launched. But in Casper's case, you do. You have these big players that are able to come in and basically be able to get a huge chunk of the supply. And in fair launches, nothing is ever truly fair. I mean, was it really fair that I was born in 2002 and I wasn't even old enough to purchase any Bitcoin until I turned 18? Is that really fair for me to get some of the supply? No, it's not fair. But the idea is you make a project that is as fair as possible, meaning that the only way that someone is able to acquire the supply is either by mining or purchasing it. And so with Caspa, when it was first launched, they had this rapid emission schedule because in the early days, the majority of people who were collecting all this Caspa were just early supporters that were mainly retail, not a big player, not a huge mining entity like Marathon Mining. It was just retail that was able to find Caspa and start mining it with the CPU and then later GPU. And then eventually, ASICs came into the picture. So I made this here that kind of shows when certain things happened on Bitcoin and when certain things happened with Caspa to kind of show why it is so good that this rapid emission schedule was implemented. So you can see ASICs came onto Bitcoin with 50.35% of the supply mine. And then ASICs came onto Caspa with about 60% of the supply mine. So about 10% more of the supply was already existing before ASICs came into the picture. And if you don't know what ASICs are, th these are dedicated hardware that only do one thing and mine a certain cryptocurrency, and they do it much more efficiently than a GPU or a CPU can. And so ASICs coming in much later in the cycle of a cryptocurrency project is much better because it prevents from big players being able to get the majority of the supply and instead make sure the majority of the supply goes to retail. So this is the comparison when looking at when ASICs came onto Bitcoin and Caspa. Now let's look at some other institutions getting involved with Caspa. So Marathon Mining started mining Bitcoin with 76.61% of the total supply already mined. And Marathon Mining started mining Caspa with 70.34% of the total supply already mined. And yes, this is less than Bitcoin, but it's just important to note that if Caspa did not have this fast emission schedule and instead try to do the same kind of like having system that Bitcoin has with a, with a much slower emission schedule, we could have had Marathon Mining coming on Caspa with like only 20% of it mined and then Marathon Mining will end up holding the majority of the supply, which could then influence the price and just make it a lot more difficult for the price to rise in the long run because you have a single entity able to basically just dump on everybody. So it's very important that Caspa did have that fast emission schedule because it prevented marathon mining from coming into the space and being able to mine when there was only maybe 20 or 30 percent of the supply existing. Instead, it can only start mining around the same amount of supply existing when they started mining Bitcoin. And then next, if we look at Grayscale, Grayscale started offering Bitcoin products with 50% of the supply mine. And Grayscale is a company that creates funds that gives institutions or investors or credited investors exposure to crypto. And Grayscale has not even started offering Casper products and over 80% of the supply is mine. And currently making this video, we saw here that 88% of the supply is currently existing in the market for Caspa and Grayscale has not even offered Caspa to their customers yet. And then the last thing I want to look at is when Binance listed Bitcoin. So Binance listed Bitcoin back in 2017 when it launched with 78.53% of the supply mined. And then today Binance has not listed Caspa in over 85% plus of the supplies mined. We did just see it. it's at 88% now and Binance has still not listed Caspa. So it's just very interesting to see that this very rapid emission schedule is actually turning out to not be such a bad idea because all of these big entities 
got into Caspa with the majority of the supply being already mined, which is actually very good for the retail investor like us, people like us who have gotten into Caspa. We just don't have these big players that have huge portions of the supply that can just manipulate the Caspa price on us. So now Caspa is in this point where we're approaching almost 90% of the supply being mined and a lot of big players have still yet to make any moves on Caspa. And this rapid emission schedule is basically forcing big players to make a decision, either ignore Caspa or adopt Caspa so that they don't miss out. And with this fast emission schedule, people are also fearful about the fact that how are miners going to stay profitable if no one's using the Caspa network. But so far, Caspa has been receiving really good adoption, especially with KRC20. And then it's going to start getting smart contracts and all that kind of stuff next year. But you could see here that in the last 24 hours, Caspa was putting in 1.2 million transactions, which is equivalent to what Ethereum puts in right now. And then it's also set records and has put over 15 million transactions in a single day which has never been done before on a traditional proof of work system that is similar to bitcoin in terms of security and decentralization so caspa really does look to have a good future and this is also another topic that i do want to talk about that caspa may be the only proof of work cryptocurrency to prove that it can remain sustainable without the supply being infinite and reaching a cap and so this is really interesting to see what caspa is going to do in the future and to me i see a huge land grab that may be happening with caspa because of the fact that this supply is already so close to being fully mined there's eventually going to be a rush to try to get as much caspa as possible because no more is going to be created and less is being created every single month i also want to show you guys this clip of nick carter because this guy was a bitcoin enthusiast and promoted bitcoin a lot and in this clip he just basically talks about the possibility of a, another cryptocurrency existing and possibly dethroning bitcoin now personally i don't believe in this belief that caspa can dethrone bitcoin and if it could i believe it would take a very long time but nonetheless i do believe it, it could potentially dethrone ethereum in the longer term and really be a top contender to, in the crypto market and be at least in the top 10 for the longer run so i want to show you guys this clip and what he says here 2009 to about july 2010 without really having a financial value so there weren't really any marketplaces. It didn't have a value. And so that gave it this really great distribution, you know, among a broad set of stakeholders. And there were no venture funds or hedge funds, you know, trying to aggressively buy up all the supply back then. Now, when you have new cryptocurrencies launched, they're like aggressively pre mined, and some gigantic Silicon Valley venture fund is going to own 30% of it. And so it's sort of impossible to conceive of how that could become a global money because how could, you know, a Silicon Valley uh, investment firm own 30% of the money supply? That doesn't make sense. That's just so oligarchical, right? It's, it's unbelievable. So Bitcoin by contracts is a very bottom up thing. It was the early enthusiasts, uh, people that were, you know, really. Um, excited about the te technology, they're the ones that obtained those early coins. And so there was a real element of fairness and just an organic nature to its launch, which would be incredibly hard to recapture today. Let's say Satoshi came back and they said, okay, I made Bitcoin 2.0, I'm going to release it. There'd be the most aggressive land grab ever by you know gigantic pools of capital to sort of get favorable allocations of the new system, right? Can uh, Satoshi with Bitcoin 2.0 build in a, a resistance mechanism or a prevention mechanism for the land grab? It would be hard to because, you know, if you have capital and resources, I mean, if it was a proof of work chain, you'd just have people that would invest a ton of money in mining, for instance. But most new blockchains, cryptocurrencies are just sold basically they're you know issued in token offerings kind of thing so so it's hard to enforce through the protocol the decentralization of control yeah of power it'd be challenging too and people have tried to do airdrops you know where they you know distribute coins to a large number of people basically doesn't work 
Most people don't care about the airdrop. So it's hard to have an equitable distribution. I think the conditions of Bitcoin's launch were so lucky and favorable that they're very unlikely to be replicated. So I do think it's going to be a real challenge to ever have a new competitor that's as decentralized, as leaderless, as dispersed, sort of distributed as Bitcoin is, has its credibility. I don't know how you could overrule it on those important features. And personally today, I think we actually have that project. The land grab was avoided with this genius fast emission schedule, and now it's prevented these big institutions and VCs to be able to get a large portion of the supply and instead has forced them to now have to take action because Casper is already almost equivalent to the amount of coins that are existent in the entire world. And so personally, I just believe that Casper does have a very unique launch and a mission schedule that just makes it so unique and superior to the majority of all other cryptocurrency in this space. And interesting enough, someone told Nick Carter that he should check out Caspa because it's everything Bitcoin intended, but better. And Nick Carter does say here, I know Caspa pretty well. And also another fun fact is Yonatan actually took an idea from Nick Carter to launch Caspa because back in 2018, Nick Carter here says it's only a matter of time, less than 12 months until we see a fair launch with an exotic proof of work released by a dev team that has also made ASICs that work exclusively with that proof of work. No details of the algorithm will be released until the Genesis block. And then Yonatan says down here, yes, it's tricky though. Incentivizing early members is necessary to bootstrap the community. Been playing with Nick Carter's unfair launch model, which inspired the launch model of Caspa. And if you have not heard the origins of Caspa and how it launched. If you go to my channel and just search DAG Labs, you'll actually see these two videos pop up called the origins of Caspa and then DAG Labs, Polychain and Fair Launch Concerns. And these two videos pretty much go into all the details of the launch of Caspa. So hope you guys enjoyed that video. And before we go, if you guys are interested in getting a Caspa Design Tangent Wallet, there are 2,400 left. And if you use the code Caspa Silver at the checkout, you'll get 10% off your order. And I also do receive a commission for this and it greatly does support my channel. But Tangent is a really great wallet to keep your Caspa offline and off exchanges. Whenever you keep your Caspa on an exchange, you don't actually own it. The exchanges do and if the exchanges were to ever go bankrupt or anything goes wrong with them they have complete control of your funds and you can't do anything about it so please look into self custodying your caspa and tantrum is a really great option to do this thank you so much for watching this video please leave a like subscribe to the channel if you guys are new around here and as always don't be average be different